Welcome to episode 36. It's been a while, Ventures. We're back for a week, and then we'll take another week off because traveling and I have prior engagements. But we right now we have episode 36, Iron Teeth Truancy. I think I put truant on the title card. It's fine. We have a new player, Liam Neary, who's going to join us for the foreseeable future. Hopefully until we're all... 95 and the campaign ends <laughs> but before that let's get started my character is in my will there you go just <laughs> that's a great idea and i'm really <laughs> tempted to explore that uh, but i'll just do the recap for now last time on venture ventures the gang got on a train this train was hosting an annual team building event for a bunch of rich assholes where they played Who Done It Murder Each Other Edition. Uh, and someone got murdered. I'm sorry, Brian. After, Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. After getting off the tra train in the city of Revens Run, the gang stocked up on supplies at a Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium location where they were accosted by some members of a local gang called the Silver Snakes. Uh, they started bullying Prodi and got what was coming to them. Oh boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> After handling the gang, uh, they continued south. And whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> handling. <laughs> they continued south and arrived in the northern city of Innis. There they heard the news of the day from a town crier some of which they had a hand in good and bad they checked in on a torch key on the torch key points where a donation was made in Prati's name to the underserved area of the city finally they crossed the raving straits of the bay of Envir and entered the southern twin city of ista where they bedded down for the evening in the folding mule tavern with plans to visit a former member of the party as well as the Baba Yaga herself, the famous and powerful witch. So it is now the next morning and the three of you are waking up and presumably having your provided breakfast. Uh, there, um, while you're eating, uh, Amy May comes up to you and delivers a letter and hands it to you Prati. oh thanks amy <clears throat> and it says read this <laughs> and it says um hey bbfs do i even call you that anymore any anyway come on by our temporary location in the nest so we can catch up and you know, maybe uh, fill out your ranks. Uh, I heard you might be taking a job from the Baba herself. But before you do that, see me, please. We're right under her tree. In the nest. Also, Martha wants to see her nephew. This is Max, by the way. Martha's writing this. No, don't write that. Heart, 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 heart. And that's the end of the note. <laughs> and hey guys, I uh, I think uh, we should go see Max and Martha. Oh uh, sure, I, I I don't know who that is, but okay. He's the uh, he runs Venture Ventures. Oh gotcha, all, all right. Yeah, someone else is who I talk to. Let's go check it out. Where's the nest? Do you guys know this is a big. Place. I can help you with that, said your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. You guys are currently in uh, Goner Glatt, which is central, the central part of Ista. And the nest is on the east side of the city. It'll take you 30 minutes to get there. It's not a problem at all. Um, so you guys head there, unless you want to do anything else in the yeah, tavern. Yeah, we head there. Hi ho. First thing you notice coming or closing in on the er that area of the city called the Nest is a massive tree sticking out above the other portions of the city. 
uh, skyline there. And um, the nest is a little more dingy than the slough, which uh, is the sister area of the city to Goner Glatt. And yeah, you what you see as you get closer to this tree, it's hundreds of feet tall, uh, a couple hundred feet wide, and um, at in the middle of this tree sits a house. Doesn't seem to be accessible by any normal means, like a stairway or anything. It's a pretty humble house, uh, steep roof, line, stained glass windows, and then the massive trunk. Uh, where it gets close to the ground, there is a Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium location right under the trunk, where the trunk should meet the roof line. It kind of fades into transparency, and uh, there's also a faint glow. It's still not fully bright, like midday light right now, so you can still see a faint glow in the tree limbs and tree trunks similar to the arcane fountains that litter the city and magically keep the city from crumbling apart um yeah and right to the uh right to the right of the baba yaga's emporium is a little it's not like the the nicer Venture Ventures location that was in the northern city of Innis. This one is a rundown. Looks like it probably could have been a storage uh, building, maybe for the Emporium. And there's a pretty simple Venture Ventures sign on the front of this building. Again, not like the super fancy one Max had uh, in front of the one in Innis. So, there you go. Uh, we go to Max's Venture Ventures. Yeah, Proudy's yep. really excited and he, he runs in. Like, oh man, can't wait to see a friendly face. Excellent. So when you enter, you see a friendly face in the form of Martha and she gets up and says, oh hey, there's my favorite Kenku, and she gives you a hug, and she's super Martha E. Hi, Martha. Pretty it's quick. Good to see you. Pretty quickly, you see her kind of deflate a little bit, a little bit, and she's looking around like, where, Prati, and she introduces herself to you. Uh, you must be Crispin. We didn't meet because you went through Veer Mall, but. I'm Martha, I'm Max's pretty much everything manager. He would fall apart without me. And it's very, it's a, oh. it's a pleasure to meet you. I thought you were a human, but I was mistaken. How do you do, Martha? Well, not exactly. I, I, you're not wrong. I, I was human. <laughs> I, I was human. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go. I'm going to go stand in the corner for a little bit. It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope I didn't offend you. I'm so sorry. No, no, it's fine. Just still getting used to it. I have a little bit. Okay. Hello, Ashwin. Hello, Martha. How are you? You're cute as ever. Hi. Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. And then but while you... I haven't you... seen a lot of red fellows, but it's okay. And while you're talking, you hear Max in the back going, If I hear one of you say, group rolls again, I'm going to grow a fucking body and buy some boots and shove them up each of your asses. Your job in a group of adventuring adventurers is to make each other successful and pick up the god's damn slack where it's needed. I know I wouldn't have enough boots for everyone's asses you don't need to bring it up or even try to bring it up and then it kind of fades again in the background um and uh martha just kind of looks back but she's so used to it she just kind of continues and goes where's where's uh where's orson 
Where's my nephew? Good question. Ooh. We have no idea. We were hoping you would know something about that. We, after we uh, dealt with that Kraken laboratory, uh, he just kind of disappeared that night. He walked off and the footsteps just stopped. Uh, we couldn't follow the tracks. Kraken <laughs> laboratory? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Felix? Uh, Felix yeah. Tri Tricknaps, he had a home slash laboratory. It was weird. But yeah, Orson was there for that, and then, uh, yeah, the next night, he just, uh, when we figured he flew away. I didn't know he was her nephew, I'm sorry. So were you doing a job for Felix after, you, so you, you did, I just want to get this clear for our records, you did the job for Felix in Viranal, in the Viranal Dominion. So, yeah. And then, so you completed that. Yeah. Wait, does that have anything to do with there? I'm hearing about some sort of mountain range collapse. Nope, I nothing. Don't worry about it. Nope. nope. <laughs> we, we, uh, we were gone by the time that happened. We oh, thank goodness. Too. Oh, thank goodness. I was I'm surprised we don't have to roll for that. <laughs> Ooh, Martha's a very trusting person. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so we, so all that. We did all that up and clearing off for Felix, and then, uh, well, we kind of, we weren't doing a job for him, sort of. The more we were helping Prady out. Okay. And we yeah, had to go Prady, out his laboratory. Prady, Prady takes out his, his, uh, three parts of the rod of seven parts, says, yeah, we got this now. I got the third part. That's pretty. From that, um from that robot lady. Ro I don't even know what you're talking about, but usually you don't need to explain to me. I, You adventures go through the weirdest stuff. It's almost like someone's guiding this into the weirdest places they could possibly go. <sighs> but I don't know which god that could be. Anyways, um, so Orson went missing after you went to... A yeah, he could be fine. He could be fine. He could be dead too. Ashwin. He he could be living his best life as a pig. It's entirely possible. So exactly. the the good news is that you're giving me the good news that he might be polymorphed, turned into a pig. That's the that or the bad, the worst part, is that he could be dead or being tortured. My nephew. Well, yeah. I mean, he his only quest was to get enough money to buy some land and expand his pig farm. So maybe, maybe he just decided he had gotten enough after the last reward. I feel like he would have told you guys. You guys presumably, presumably have been through a lot. With yeah, it was a surprise. It was a bit weird. How, how well do you know your nephew? Well, he's always been, he's always been a, you know, a, a bit of a loner, but I had... We did suspect that he might have been a werewolf, but... I was not, like, do you know what we, that was? We never really witnessed him turn into a wolf or anything. Well, he always talked about some friend. He had an imaginary friend for a while growing up. And I thought that was like a warlock thing. Once I started working here, warlocks started talking about patrons and whatnot. So that those two things clicked, and um, that's kind of what I chalked it off to. But he's always been kind of, you know, just he liked to be by himself. He's always been a hard worker, but always had a good heart. Oh, my goodness. And then she's starting to kind of get into a panic again and uh you hear max pipe up again getting angry as he d is wont to do furthermore if you're gonna be a member of this company you can't blame whoever you're with for not doing their job whatever you think that job was nobody has a job there is some weird shit out there look at me 
A Vondra herself might show up and make your healing fingers just drain the life out of somebody and make you this giant sword you got on your back just heal people or whatever. Who knows? Anything can happen. My point is I don't have time to deal with the preconceived notions of what adventurers should and shouldn't be. Who's to say you're right or wrong? I'm Martha. I do! I'm... And then you hear... <laughs> and it keeps going on. Uh, Martha turns to you and says, uh, Yeah, uh, Crispin? Uh, who, who, who's he back there with? <laughs> uh, they're called... She goes... They're called the... They call themselves... They're a new adventuring party. They've only had a couple jobs under their belt. Literally a couple jobs. They call themselves the Roasters of Envir? Uh, and then you hear Max at, at that point go, I do! I determine what is right or wrong in this company, and I say you're wrong. I've seen enough successful parties to know what works and doesn't work. Go ahead. Oh, the bride just hears the roasters and he just gets like real, real riled up real quick. He's just like, the roasters. Your the volume roast went down. Barbar the roast barbarians, they, they attack Doomerville and I, I spent the better part of a decade defending Doomerville from the roast barbarian. Uh, she goes, the, the, uh, I think this is different. It's the roasters of Envir. Like, like cooking? Oh, okay. Like, like the roast chicken? <laughs> yeah, um, and then you hear Max go, that's such a stupid name, by the way. Just get out of here, I'm done with you. Roasters of Envir, you gotta come up with something different. Why did I even let you pick that name and be associated? And then you see, you see a... <laughs> A Genasi, uh, water Genasi walk out, just a which is essentially a blue hued humanoid with very beautiful blue hair, and then behind her you see a massive dwarf, massive for a dwarf, but just built like a boulder, and uh, behind him two humans. And they are walking out kind of with their heads low and uh, don't even make eye contact with you guys or Martha. <laughs> um, and they just head on out. Embarrassing. And, uh... <laughs> Brody, just, Brody just turns to... Walk uh, of Ash Ashwood and <laughs> Chris Beatty just goes, hey, uh... I think I might have seen their act with uh, a lot of a lot of solo drumming and uh, and and making little play doh and like, spitting in each other's mouths. Anybody? <laughs> Blue Man Crew? Um, roasted, right? <laughs> little roast. Who's the roaster now? You got him. You got him. I just got. I, I don't roast them to their face though. They already left the building. So just oh, I, I, I said what I said out loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Max, you you uh, you hear some talking, loud talking under his breath, as you've seen him do many times. You can hear it from the back room that he's made his office. And Martha goes, "Just give me one sec. I'll go uh, let him know you're here." And uh, she goes back there, and you hear, yeah, send him back. And uh, uh, real quick, uh, guys, before we go back and talk to Max, uh, are we doing a job for him? Are we about to get paid? Do we know what's about to happen? I don't. <laughs> Proddy, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Proddy's eating. I mean, no, wait, wait. Theoretically, <laughs> no. Go ahead, tell him. Tell him. What I'm eating. <laughs> While you're talking, yum, you yum, just yum. see you see Prati the Kenku. There's like a potted plant in the corner, and he just starts like <laughs> pecking at it, and he's seems to be like eating some of it. And you're kind of um. Hey guys, I think I think he still does. He still have to pay us for uh, he still has to pay us for we technically found Alu, right? We we were supposed to rescue him, but we technically found him, right? 
Did we get paid for that? Anyway, that's what I'm expecting. That's the only thing I would think we would get paid for. Okay. Good to know. So you had that was right when we oh. met you. That was right when we met you, Crispy. We were trying yeah, to rescue. Yeah, I remember. You. That was the flesh golem. Right, right. Yeah. right. Uh, so you head on back to where Martha and you heard the, Max's obnoxious voice, and uh, his office is remarkably similar to the one in Innis, despite the fact that this building is was not custom retrofitted for his needs. You still do see a lot of storage boxes and bins and wooden crates around. Uh, but you enter his office, and there you see Crispy. You see a floating head, uh, no neck, no, no body. And his eyebrows, where they start like a normal human type of being... They slowly turn into wings and come out, and they're slightly flapping, but not hard enough, you don't think, to keep him afloat. But you just see a head floating, and he's got a big, wicked, meaty mustache, and he's frowning, and there's four different pink, purplish, spectral hands floating around, moving papers around, seemingly working on their own when you guys walk in and he says up ah, crispy it is nice to meet you i haven't met you yet i understand you're dealing with my associate in viramal it is a pleasure to meet you i thought you were a human but i won't talk about that anymore if that makes you uncomfortable i kind of thought you were a human too oh well, no I problem no i'm i i like to call i don't know what i am i like to call i don't remember you know you don't remember how you were made i don't remember how i was made i just kind of was this so i made up my own name i i like to call although i haven't met anyone else like me i like to call if there was another I'd like to call us the Browvians. Browvians, okay. Because I of... I look forward to meeting another Browvian. It's a pleasure, Max. It's Hi. a pleasure, I'm yeah. Stand over here. Uh, Max, it's so good to see you. And he kind of just, he kind of just like, goes up to the floating head and he just kind of uh, taps him on the head. It's so good to see you, Max. And all four hands kind of come to your your face and caress your beak. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Spectral hands are just... Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's real nice, uh, Max. Yeah. And he says, well, it's good to see you all here. Uh, I feel like we're missing one immensely tall in comparison to all of you person who should be here. Uh, Orson! Ring a bell, anyone? Want to tell me what happened? Uh, wow, we just said all this to Martha, but yeah, he, uh, he just, like, wandered off. We have no idea what, what happened to him. We figured, uh, I mean, several possibilities. He's a werewolf. He got enough money to finally expand his pig farm. He turned himself into a pig and is living his best life. Uh, or he was, like, viciously, viciously murdered. I mean, it could be oh. anything. Yeah. Make we a... found footsteps and then no footsteps, and that was that was about it. He was he was gone. Make a persuasion check for me, Grotty. I was gonna say persuasion check. Sponsored by Los Angeles Derby Dolls, <laughs> as well as the UCB. Improv Comedy Theater. We are not <laughs> sponsored by any of, the, any of these. We and are sponsored by power. Downward Dog. No, that's not what that sticker says. It Sorry. says Down Dog. Pale Down Dog? I don't know. What One do you guys... Dog? Oh. Dog. Sorry, I gotta get my character sheet up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, anyways, Max, while you're doing that, Max, uh, continue to do that. Uh, Max turns to all of you and go well um 
So, whatever happened with Orson, I assume he seemed like a pretty decent guy, if not a little disaffected at times. Uh, you know, Martha knows more about him than I do, but he seemed decent. I'm sure you'll be wanting to find out what happened to him at some point. Uh, but I heard you were gonna... 17. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's persuaded. Uh, and... Why do we have to persuade him of that? Because he's an untrusting, suspicious person, and a missing... You were very vague, also, like... Oh, okay, yeah. Got it. (laughs) Like, you didn't go into, like anything really so um he goes well we heard you were gonna take a job from bobby yaga we like to keep an eye an ear out for different adventuring gigs uh we didn't think four was enough we definitely don't think three people are enough so uh we have someone who we think would be a great fit. Our algorithm fit him into your group. You guys can't, that reminds me, you guys can't be the big bedfellows. I mean, you can still... Yeah, we brought that up. And uh, yeah, we could definitely use another person. I mean, not to say we're not effective with just the three, but um, I need to point out the obvious. I died, so... Yeah, let's have another we very nearly all killed by some green ape so mm, that did happen we... i almost yeah, we died have... and then i died okay i hear a lot of weird things from adventures but uh usually i just ignore it as part of the job but you almost died and you died and you were a human i thought and then you now you're a goblin what mm-hmm. happened there um, I, I died, and then I and then I was brought back by an a small one, it was like this big. Who um, killed you? Some shitheads on the train, really rich one. Uh, can't remember their name. It had to do with diamonds. Oh, Zekin Collective. No, nah, that's the one. Oh shit. Yeah. There's been bunch of dicks. There's been rumors of their bonding vacation thing they do on trains where it's like a murder mystery. Is that what happened? Yep, consider it confirmed. It's disgraceful. Uh, Please tell me you didn't take any revenge on them. Nope, just a bunch of their money. I mean... They're not going to come after it. We didn't steal it. They willingly gave you some sort apparently of... The, apparently the biggest payout they've ever given people. So there's that. Okay. I, I did die. Anyway, uh, so who, who do you have? <laughs> well, uh... Tony, he's tall. I need a new perch. You see Max kind of furrow his brow oh, and... Come on. <laughs> and, uh... He kind of pauses and f- starts floating towards the door. And well, I this is going to be a good match. And quite frankly, it's not the height that matters. If I couldn't fly, I'd be shorter than all of you. Anyways, let me go get him. And uh, yeah, uh, he leaves and brings back Liam. Why don't you describe what they see as you come in the door? So I kind of waddle in. Uh, I'm a halfling, so the wanting to perch is not happening. Uh, <laughs> I have blonde, kind of like shaggy hair, and I have a blonde, shaggy beard, but not the mustache part, just kind of the bottom strap. And I'm just dressed in just generic-looking clothing. Nothing very distinct. Do you kind ha- of walk up and be like, hmm? Do you have yeah. a happy disposition or Max-like disposition where you're grumpy as hell? Not, not grumpy at all. Kind of like kind of like just kind of half cheerful half cocky so i walk out i'm like oh hey how's it going oh i'm rylos rylos blackweed max does our algorithm just look for other short people i think i'll fit in right right with the rest of you uh yeah i believe you will 
Crispy, that's a fantastic question. Uh, that is part of the algorithm. I I, yeah, I will okay. be honest there. <laughs> I we... listen. They said you're short-handed, so you just need more short hands. They're not wrong. And uh, can't, can't argue with that logic. Yeah. So he Rylos is a bit of a magic user, but also very quick with his hands and tricky. I think he's into book. You told me you're into books, if I remember a little bit. Yeah, I like books. I've never met a What's rogue that was into books, and I thought you you lost one member that was super into books aradia the one who should have stayed with you because she needed more experience outside of a library so you needed another book person i felt <laughs> that went into the algorithm it's all custom it's all heavy math that's Are you book person. stupid hmm? what Maybe. Said, are you calling us stupid? No, Ashwin. I would. I could not. I. I no. Of course not. Anyways, Prady just goes. Hey, my name's my name's Prady. I have I have this book, and he pulls out his, his book of ancient secrets. Just like, look, I got. What's it look like? Got some new spells. It's black. It's got a black cover, and it's got <laughs> black gloss over the the outside of the pages and he opens it up and it's just regular old school papyrus type paper in there and he's got his his first couple um rituals written down in there just kind of shows it to uh, oh yeah that's a nice book right there a book yeah can i read that my name's proddy <laughs> frylo so just you know introduce good to meet you who yeah. are the other two yeah. oh this is ashwin she Hello. is a badass. Don't oh, get in a physical so altercation with her. She's a champion, that. and she's from the forest, and she likes to sit on top of people. It's a little weird, and, but okay. And then this is this is crispy well, used to be human. It made a lot more sense before. Crispy's got no, a badass no, whip with really a mind of his own. Small. That's, that's true. By but the way, now I'm a goblin who looks oh, got the fucked up teeth. My skin is green. I'm only three and a half feet tall. You gave you, know. you gave yourself fucked up teeth? Well, yeah, I'm a goblin. I mean, they're like sharp, jagged teeth. Oh, okay. Goblins have fucked up teeth. This All is right. Could be worse. It would be more creepy if they were like Cut. perfect Cut. human <laughs> teeth. <laughs> that would be really creepy, but they're not. Um. So, Rylos, without you even really noticing it right away... When Prati was talking, it wasn't out loud. It was telepathically in your head, but it was so, like, at the right volume. And it took you a few seconds to click that that's what was happening. Oh. Yeah, so, man, I hope it's okay if I communicate with you telepathically. But I'm... Only if I can do it right back at you. And I just kind of like take out a little piece of copper and I wrap it around my finger and I whisper into it and only Prodi can hear like, I can do that too, because I cast a message. Ooh, I Excellent. like that. Excellent. Uh, and Max says... Hey, uh, hey, and Prodi just, Prodi just turns to Crispy and Ashley's like, see, we got, we got this thing now, we got this thing. <laughs> it's all right, I'm making, I'm making waves already and I, I uncurl the wire from my finger and just put it back in my pocket. Oh no, did Ashwin freeze? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, she's uh, back. Yeah, uh, oh, no, I'm frozen. Oh, now you're good. Okay, good. Thank God. Uh, okay, so Max says, uh, uh, you guys can catch up later and, uh, you know, send me a message if, uh, things aren't working out. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, uh, I'll either send you a note or I'll check in with you with sending. But um, did you guys complete your task for Felix Tricknips? And did he pay you? 
Yes. Yes and, and no. No. Oh. Ash, Ash, got it. Okay. I got I got one of the pieces of the rod of seven parts. That was kind of my compensation. Oh well. I mean, Felix pays. He paid for a task, and um, he hasn't gotten back to us about you know you you guys meeting. So I'm just gonna pay. That's weird. Well, I, I just so, he's he's a busy philanthropist, mm -hmm. inventor, he's, genius. He's busy, all very right. busy. That's true. Is there more to that, or I'm no. sure there is, but I don't know. I don't know what his master plan is. He has a master plan. Are we talking I'm like sure he does a new invention or? I don't know, from what we know, like he... he always has something, though. I don't yeah, know what, what it is. I don't know. All I know is we, we did the job, and, and we've yet to be paid. Okay. Well, we can pay you. Uh, by the way, Thanks. sorry about the digs. Our place in the Arbor Green, as you may know, is is... Whatever, overgrown. Yeah. So whatever's in there, it's now part of it. Uh, your house. Yeah, so yeah, your house. Do you know what happened to your house? No, I mean I assume it's in there too. Uh, well, no. As the area was expanding, the affected area. Did you know your your house was a warehouse? Was a warehouse? Yeah, you know, every once in a while you see those houses, uh, like fully <laughs> mobile, <laughs> off their foundations and moving in the no, city. What? I did not. I no, did not I know can't say. A house that could get up and walk away. You can't have a house that could just walk watching. away. It's no, not. It's no. not common with you. Crispy, this is new. Uh, Ashwin, nope. this is new. Proddy, this is not new for you. It's new for everyone except Proddy. Proddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. In oh, episode... Yeah, you don't remember yeah. shit. In episode <laughs> seven... <laughs> I think it was episode seven or eight. Um, when you time traveled accidentally, uh, uh. you were taken uh, by a bunch of roguish characters and you fought... <laughs> Whoa! Sorry, that's an amber alert. Oh shit! Hurricane Ooh. time. Uh, oh, yeah. Hurricanes don't interrupt D and D. That's just the bottom line. Not at all. Not unless yeah. they're a category no. twenty-seven. So I, I remember the instance of a moving warehouse, but I didn't know that our specific headquarters was a warehouse no is no that what you're saying i'm i yeah, yeah you wouldn't have known that because it was a very yeah. uh it was a house no, uh, I, I remember being in a moving building but yeah I did, that was not i didn't know that the same applied to our house you yeah that makes sense uh some you already knew though that some of the buildings in anista have that capability it's likely something to do with the arc fountains that kind of course magic through just about everything in the city and keep the buildings up so on and so forth uh max goes does that mean our house is worth more oh yeah uh that's number one but the uh uh, uh where is it now yeah that's, that's what i'm getting to crispy this is i never thought i'd say this uh I, I'm sorry to tell you, your house went off and joined the circus when this happened. Left, oh. left a note. Please don't tell me it's the, uh, the circus I'm thinking of. I no, no more circus. What? What's wrong with the circus? <sighs> mm, the last circus this... you were a part of wasn't enjoyable. Wait, wait, I would love to hear that story sometime. Uh, have you heard of the Strani Acting Company? It's a group of circus beholders. Yeah, they're terrible. Sounds they're like really it. bad at acting. 
Is that in the Viranal Dominion? Is that? Sure is. That's a shitty place. Don't oh, it's there. even more it's shitty now. It's... No, what? Did our house go there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where your house went. <laughs> But I love your lying attempt. Oh no, what? <laughs> um, it is. Max goes, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, someone's calling it a, I've heard it called a dread, a domain of dread now. It is fully a pocket dimension of the Shadowfell. And, this what is, happened to the, I don't even know if this two, is true. It is. What happened to our two employees that were in there? Were they in there? <laughs> we had two. I had a whole locksmith in business. Oh, in your in your house. I thought you meant in the Viranal Dominion. Oh. Whew. I just thought I was a lot worse at running business, a business than I am. Which... Turns out I'm pretty darn good. Anyways, uh, no, your house. I don't know where your house went. It said it went to join the circus. I don't oh, even. Okay. I don't even know if it joined that circus. It didn't specify what circus. It just said, "This is fucked." Going to join the circus. <laughs> and it, and it folded the paper that it wrote it in into a little, of uh, like a. Caver's style ranch mansion, and the note was inside. It was all of paper. It was fancy. I don't know how it did it. At least it was polite enough to leave a note. Do you have the note? Can we see it? Yeah, I, I actually do. But this is. I want to keep this. Can I keep this? Well, it depends. Can we see it? Yes, but. Can I make a copy of it? <laughs> Uh, you're, I don't. I don't think you can copy the craftsmanship of this folded no, paper no, building. Just the words. Just the words. Oh, yeah. It said exactly what he 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 brings it out on this. Um, oh, he just said this is fucked. I'm out joining the circus. Yeah. And, Thanks a lot, Howard. And you see, kind of a French, uh, manor style, little tiny, paper house. And it says, this is fucked. I'm joining the circus. Huh. But it's beautiful. Like, it's not like a... Sh uh, it's it's beautiful origami. It's just brilliant. Well, Who knew um, a house could be that talented? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Have a, you have a very talented house if you can find it. Uh, did You know, when you saved the Gid Ward from those hags all those kids and you got this house i thought that was pretty cool but this is like you got all that other stuff and then you got this i mean this is one of the best anyways we can talk about it later just it's amazing just take my word for it anyways so <laughs> uh, baba uh baba yaga you're gonna do a job for her potentially is that what you're doing yeah yep. we got to find her iron teeth turn her teeth and run off okay uh, of inanimate objects uh leaving yeah. oh yeah weird she, she got in a fight with her teeth i don't know that's apparently a thing yeah i've i've can we, do you know is she next door can we just pop in that one or yeah this do we have to go back this used to be their one of their storage buildings and sarah was kind enough to uh offer this place once she found out that our location in anista in the arbor green district was enveloped by whatever the hell's going on up there so yeah um uh sarah 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 give her my regards payment that's what i was gonna do uh what do we say starts looking through papers all these pink purplish hands start combing through them and he's floating over looking at them and he goes you guys wouldn't happen to remember what it was don't try to 
screw with me now. And he's still looking like. And then he goes, uh, I think it was like 150 uh, a piece. So Martha, Mar Mar Martha, get, yeah, no, get the 150. All right. Martha comes in a few seconds later. And uh, the three of you have 150 gold. Each? Yes, correct. Uh, Sweet. Not you, Rylos. Sorry, uh, but you didn't get That's turned. what I get for joining. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you you kind of lucked out because you could have met the, uh, the circus uh, <laughs> up there. That's very fair. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, Max says, yeah, so Baba, I've never met her, um, I don't think. There's weird stuff. Sarah mentioned it in passing when she was setting us up with this place that, you know, sometimes Baba can make it hard to remember your interactions with her in some ways i don't know if it's a fey thing or or if she's magically doing this she's certainly capable you hear and all of you have heard stories of baba yaga just a famous witch and wizard uh and uh yeah he uh basically if you guys don't need anything else let you guys head out Ashwin, you good? Yep. Sounds good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Brian from the Beyond is good. Yep. Uh, he's good. Oh, okay. He's got those fancy magic headphones that don't need wires. Yep. Uh so leaving Martha says goodbye and she's as wonderful and uh always forget the name of the actress from ferris bueller's who played the secretary um you guys know who i'm talking about anyways she lets you go and uh asks you to check back in if you find anything out else about orson and you head next door and inside this place is a much fancier version of the uh, emporium you were in in revan's run Rylos Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium is a chain of exactly what it sounds like, Magical Emporiums, and you've probably been in a few of them. Um, probably. And walking in, seeing your face, a smiling face, looks back at you, Prati, and it's Sarah the Furbolg. Seven foot tall furbolg, and she goes, Prody. Oh my God, Sarah! Do my eyes deceive me? No, they don't, Prody. How are you? Oh, been through a lot. How's your business going? Oh, um, you know, I, I'm learning a lot. I don't. It's kind of in a hold pattern right now because I'm working for uh baba and she's teaching me a ton about you know capitalism and making money <laughs> and what have you learned about good? capitalism well you can justify profits if you can justify profits you can justify anything so that right Ooh, wow that's a slippery slope um do, so is there a part of the store where you sell your uh, your different scents um Oh, I, I still have them. Perfumes. I have oh, okay. To, I have to. I have to work a little bit more for Baba, and she said she'd uh, consider she give you the shelf priority shelf space. Exactly. So I'm running this uh, location for her. I love having you know what happened to Venture Ventures and Anista is horrible. So I offered the storage space there, and Baba agreed. And I love having Max nearby because I can still hear his yelling every once in a while through the walls. Uh, and it's very comforting. But That's comforting. it's so good to see you. It's so good um, to see you, Prati. Do you, do you know where is Bob? 
Baba here. Oh, yeah. We were she... hoping to get on that job finding uh, her teeth. Finding her teeth. Yeah, she's upstairs. Uh, so I don't know how to prepare you for her. There's She's very intense. <laughs> Just... I, there's really nothing I can say. I've been thinking about this for oh, since I first sent you that message, and I honestly couldn't come up with anything. So, just uh, yeah. Oh, did you did you open that box? Did you did you open the the uh, what is it? An emerald? No. You... Oh yeah, the the gift, the gift from. Uh... No, mm. Baba checked that, and she was yeah, like, "Yeah, it almost killed us. A bunch of green, a bunch of green apes came out of a gem, and then yeah, something, and then almost killed us." Yeah, we kept his dog, and didn't do what we agreed to do when he helped us defeat those uh, hags. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Baba said he's like an archfey who yeah. loves to take, you know, speak truth to power or whatnot. And, but she was very, she cackled for about 15 hours once I told her who we messed with. And she was just, she knew right away not to fuck with it. Anyway, so, uh, I want that dog. Prodi, I gotta tell you, I want to keep that dog. I love that dog, Siren. I love her. You still have her? Shh. Just keep your telepathic yelling down. <laughs> By the way, all of you hear this. Yeah. Uh, if Prodi, because Prodi can like open, he can telepathically speak as if he's speaking with a normal voice so if you're a mile away he you can't talk to him because you couldn't talk to somebody a mile away in most circumstances with your voice uh unaltered so uh she goes yeah i just it's so she's so cute and she at first she hated baba and baba like <laughs> baba liked the dog Siren, you know, yapping at her, and then Baba got annoyed, and finally the Siren grew on Baba, and Baba agreed that I could keep her. But she... Why'd you, why'd you tell me to keep my voice down, though? Because I don't want any of our patrons to... I neglected to mention that there was a couple people in the store, but uh, she doesn't want any of your patrons who... Her patrons... I don't want any of her patrons to who has any sort of magical ability. Everyone who comes in here probably has some magical ability or knows someone. Maybe they have some, I, I don't know. There's a lot of weird people who've come in here, Prodi. So, anyways, just do me that favor. So, yeah, I want to keep the dog. We got to figure this out or we are just going to get fucked by this, this okay, yeah. arch fae. Well, well, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just go find the teeth and... Okay. Uh, anyways, here's the door. It's right there. Uh, just head, take those stairs, and it'll bring you, bring it up there. And, uh, yeah. You guys, you guys ready? You guys, uh, gonna brace yourselves for what we're about to see in there? Let's go. How uh, bad could it be? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're, yeah, we're pretty that's... experienced adventurers at this point. We got it, and we just kind of, like, cock, cockily, cockily, <laughs> walk into the, walk into the room. I think cockily is a word. It is now. <laughs> add that add that to the Venture Ventures dictionary. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you head to the door she pointed out. You open it, and it's a st it's stairs leading down into darkness, uh, which is not rational at all because you saw a house on top of the tree that's above you guys currently. And you head down these stairs, and... There's some weird changes in temperature as you continue down. Very quick changes from cold to hot and everything in between. And eventually you find uh, at the bottom of these stairs a 
door with light coming out of the bottom and sides of it. And you open that up. And inside you see a unassuming ageless woman with a light gray colored skin that has a blue hue when there's candles everywhere. So when she turns in certain directions, there's just this kind of glint of light blue in her skin. And uh, she has black hair and same blue thing going on. Uh, her ears are mildly pointy. She's got a short cropped haircut. But like I said, she doesn't seem old. You, you think she should be very old. She should be well past dead by now, considering all the stories people have told. And the, the fictional ones, the, the children's story as well, stories as well as the more likely ones. Um, and in this room she is just cooking tea and it's an unassuming room just a wooden table there's nothing fancy about it the windows like i said when i was describing the outside are stained glass um that does provide uh some refractions of color that are quite nice and she says to you oh yes the big bed fellows is that right the what um. I suppose you must be Miss Miss Lager. Yeah. We're kind of in between names right now, but yeah. We're uh, not exactly big anymore, if you can't really tell. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about that. You have a new member, and that's fine. I, I trust Max implicitly. And you can't tell if she's looking at her at you because her eyes are nearly closed and just... It's very hard to see what's going on under those lids. And she's just like, Oh, would you like some tea? I just made it right now. Yep, sure. Please. I mean, tea would be lovely, yeah. Uh, don't worry, Parati, I believe your name is. Sarah told me a bunch, of, uh, bunch about you. Uh, that plant is perfectly edible. Uh, so you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> I'm just going to keep, until you finish that salad, I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh, and um, she says, yes, I have a task I need done. And uh, my iron teeth have uh, left me in the dust of time. And I need... So Go ahead. And I need someone to retrieve them. So is she telling us this with just like a mouthful of gum? It, or does it, she it, have do teeth have in her teeth. mouth? You you can't see any teeth and she goes walks over sighs and walks over uh, to a side table and reaches in. Her back is to you. She's got plain clothes and nothing it's something you would see in any part of the city on on citizens any citizen uh and she puts something in her mouth and she goes were you checking to see if i had teeth yes yes well i have other sets of teeth just not those iron teeth and you see the teeth she has in are very nice dentures, white teeth, like wood. The nicest dentures you could imagine. Uh, a a fantasy setting person of high magic could have. And she says, "So I think the teeth, my teeth, went where they normally went or go." Right. To yes, I'm getting there. Did you recently have something done, Crispy? Yeah, I got a set of new teeth too. As it turns out, new body altogether. She, there's been no introductions, by the way. So this is just 
she seems to know your name and this it just started like this uh mm -hmm. and she goes interesting so there's a cave in the region of the Feywild that is under the Winter Court's control. And I have a long standing deal with Queen Mab and Queen Titania that I cannot enter the Feywild, nor can any of my confidants who work for me, magical folk that joined me uh, here. So I need you to go fetch my teeth. Uh, but here's the rub. I need to see what you're capable. Sarah, Sarah is a lovely capitalist up and comer, but I need to see what you're made of. So if you wouldn't mind, in the next room, I would like you to defeat my familiar. Just a done. familiar? Done and done. If you do this successfully, defeat my familiar, I will give you something to aid you in finding my teeth because you will need um, it there they doesn't want to be found most of the time when this happens i think this happened a hundred and some years ago and can magically become invisible so I'm, you're going to need an item but we're getting ahead of ourselves why don't you head to the second door on the left down that hall and defeat my familiar and um uh oh, okay sounds good yeah sure i I, I I take my whip off my belt um ashwin it's it's kind of more a comfort thing can you just hop on my shoulders for the start of this it's <laughs> I, just, just just it feels weird if you're not this there can you still carry me uh, yeah i should be able to i'll manage okay rylos this, this is weird. yeah this is a weird this is a mouse folk by the way i forgot to have you guys describe your characters to rylos uh ashwin we'll start with you please describe what uh, rylos sees do you see a two foot mouse with armor and a shit ton of weapons strapped onto her she has a gold hoop um in her ears um but she's a super super cute mouse Excellent. Prodi. You see a uh, Kenku. Is, he's all black. Uh, he's a He's got a crow's face uh, and crow's uh, feet, but he has kind of human humanoid arms with feathers um, and hands. So he doesn't have wings. Um, he's carrying a uh, half of the rod of seven parts he's got a little got a little bag and he's got a cloak and that's about it yeah for you just to give you a point of reference rylos uh you've seen kenku especially in yeah. this city plenty you've seen goblins a little less but you've seen this is a very metropolitan city it's probably the most diverse city definitely in the continent uh so you've even seen goblins uh and Ashwin is probably the mouse folk you maybe, maybe have seen. You've definitely heard of them, you've read about them, but they usually keep to themselves. Uh, not something I'd find in the city easily. No, no, not, all. not unless you were looking for them or if you went to the forest and looked for them. Uh, Crispy, why don't you describe what you look like? Yeah, so I'm a three and a half foot tall, lanky, lean goblin. Uh, green skin, green eyes. Uh, not not cute. Not cute at all. Uh, I don't wear any armor. It's just like light linen clothes with a leather vest and a like wide brimmed cowboy hat that I'm 
I've been keeping like pulled way down on my face. Um, I got a flail hanging on one hip and a and a coiled up whip on the other, and a bag slung over my shoulder that I pull very large things out of all the time. Do you still have your tattoos or? Um. DM. <laughs> yeah, you you do. Um, All right, you can so choose. It's a much harder to see <laughs> tattoo, um, but I mean, I, I usually have a pretty light <laughs> linen shirt, so it can be seen, or the edges of it can be seen. I do have a tattoo oh, not, on my chest. You're not Donald Ducking it anymore. No, I I've, I got clothes. <laughs> yeah, I got clothes made for me for a solid episode or two. I was Donald Ducking it. Yeah. Amazing. Um, <laughs> no, so I do have a tattoo on my chest as well. It's just much harder to see with my dark green skin. Um, but it seems to have carried over from my previous body. Excellent. So, uh, anything you want to do before you go to the second door on the left? Oh, I just respond to him saying, is this a thing? I'm like, well, her legs are really short, and mine used to be a lot longer, so this is really effective. Now it's just a security blanket. This is all new to me. Were you the right, big bed the fellow? And we're just kind of the fellows now? Is big bed fellows all a right, thing? Right, Are we me, married to that? To we're not. We're not big bed fellows bed anymore fellow. because we don't sleep in the same bed. It was, the bed was big, not the people in the adventuring. The bed was big because all of us would sleep in it. It's so you none all of us... shared a bed. Yeah, oh, we, we all had we do, we do still do we that. Big party right. members, small party money. members, yeah. But we can just do it in a twin bed now, so. Soon you know. we'll be the twin bed fellows. All right. <laughs> there, there you, you go. Know, I, I'm saying <laughs> the bitty bed fellows. Why is there got to be a bed involved? <laughs> well, That's a fair we'll question. Keep... <laughs> That's a fair question. <laughs> we'll keep workshopping that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep workshopping that. We'll find something better. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Does this uh, does Bobby Yaga I'm do not this? introducing Bobby myself as a big bedfellow or bedfellow <laughs> all together. Can uh, we just Yeah, go. tabling discussion. Uh, Let's go open the door. And I'm just gonna walk over to the door like still so like, everyone, kind of, like everyone's them. everyone's cool with uh, taking on this uh, familiar. I mean yeah, how bad like, could it be? Maybe right. the most powerful familiar we've ever, <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> and there's really no we don't even get any. We didn't even ask her if we get anything for yeah. defeating this. So yeah, she said right. get like some. She said she'd give us something if we yeah. defeat it. Yeah. Yeah, we get like a tool to help her find her teeth. That's let's not see. really. Let's see what happens. That's not really a bonus. Let's let's think about it for a moment. Is how do you find teeth normally? Uh, so we okay, obviously okay. need help with the samples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. If these are teeth that can move, but why not just give us? The tool? <laughs> she Maybe. she said she has to see what Listen. see how what we're capable Listen. of. I just feel like we're risking our lives for absolutely Wait. no reason right now. Well, so she said, didn't she say go invisible so well, that we can't see the teeth? How but can just we, give us the tool. For, to for well, one us. of one of two things, she's not employing us yet. She needs to see if we're capable first. And if we're capable, she's going to give us the thing so that we can do the job so that we can get paid. This, so this is like is an audition. Requisite is, there we go. This audition. is for any job. I get, I get for all any, that. But... <laughs> for any job Dave did had to apply for in his life where they had him like take a test, this is what they went through. <laughs> Why do I have to? I have the paper. I have the college degree. What? I have the thing that says you hire me now. <laughs> I paid a lot of money for this. Why do you say no job? Give me job now. I'm wasting I'm wasting time and you guys aren't even paying me. I'm doing this stupid engineering test. You're making me put together a toothpick bridge that can withstand 25 pounds of force. Oh, this is about me, not not about Prati. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh so Baba is was Prati at all saying that or because I know some of you were responding in character and some of... And... Oh, yeah, no. Prati was definitely saying that. Okay. But he, I mean, I, he could have been saying it telepathically. I'll leave it up to you. Baba, well, regardless, you're in her house, so... Uh, Baba, Baba says, For fuck's sake, <laughs> Prati. 
Do you want the job or not? I will make you... It will be worth it, I promise. Okay, alright. You, you convinced me. I even One, two, have three, some inf go. information on that rod you carry. So, after you complete the job... Ah, now that... Oh, look! That the piques of my interest. Bonus! And if... I've been around for... I, time is not a thing for me, so I don't keep track, but I've been around forever, so let's just... Yeah. I have information for all of you if you need it, basically. I know everything. I know Sarah says I don't know everything, but th this is why I like her. She keeps me in line. I probably don't know everything. I know a lot, though. Anyways, get in there. And, uh... Like kick in the door. <laughs> she, yeah. And as you kick in the door with Ashwin on your back hey. uh it's i just imagine like a, a swaying you know thing of people yep. uh as you kick open the door you hear you hear yaga just mutter something a little bit louder as you kick her door in uh but nothing really too bad and when you guys enter you see I shout I can fix it as I kick in the door. <laughs> <laughs> you see a beautiful, beautiful scene. A 60-foot uh, diameter stone circle room that is encased in uh, stained glass similar to what you saw on the uh, outside of the, the windows on the outside of the house. Uh, the stone walls... Uh, in circle, as I said, and the stained glass starts at about 10 feet up and then comes up to a peak. And uh, there's a small mound, not small, but like the middle of the room, it's not wood or stone floor. It's a plethora of different kinds of flowers. It would be the Easter bunnies wet dream in terms of colors of flowers just all over this floor and dirt like there's not there's no dirt to be seen it's just pastels pastel flowers everywhere on this floor and it kind of goes into a round mound in the center um as you enter the room the the door behind you uh is still there but it is stone now on the other side uh and yeah. Uh, what do you guys do? Well, this place is obnoxious. I'm going to look around. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a I'll... moment to mend the door jam that I just busted. Sure. Um, I'll just close, close the door silently and just like <laughs> me mend it back to fix. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> when you're doing that, you're, it's hard because this side is the, the stone side and it's very small. Uh, gap but you think hmm. that you haven't used mending very often it's kind of a new no. thing for you and you're kind of taking your time with it and you think Baba might have came by and just kind of went and like helped you mend it it's fine now Liam why don't you make an investigation check if you are using um you know, poking and prodding, if you're just kind of walking around using your sight and such, um, then use perception. I'll, I'll use perception. Okay. I'm better at looking at things. Yeah, Prouty's just prodding, prodding with his rod. Seven plus eight. Okay, so 15. That's a solid 15. Uh, when you start walking around and just looking and listening you see the flowers start to take shape in front of you and they take shape into a version of you that is beautiful. I don't know what Rylus thinks of himself, but, or what he would say he thinks of himself in, out loud in public, but you think this being in front of you, this flower person that just took shape is a really great rendition of you uh just flattered 
Let's just kind of like take a moment and like, it, can I see if like if I move, it moves like me, or is it just standing there? It's just smiling and standing there. I just kind of like look around and be like, oh, "Hey, that's good work. I can appreciate it." And and it's very, it's spot on. And uh, once you step back, it turns into Ashwin. And Ashwin, you see this thing, these pastel petals and leaves and foliage swirl around and then come to form a beautiful and flattering version of you and it's just smiling and beaming at you i don't like this no i'm the cute one i don't like this <laughs> yes. so, is this the familiar and uh this goes on feel free to it goes on to you proddy and to you crispy crispy when it gets to you it's a better looking goblin i don't know how crispy feels but it's yeah i just uh, said just... they're still fucking ugly and i crack it in the face with my whip and okay see if that, uh, does roll initiative <laughs> oh boy <laughs> can we God. burn it guys i think this we should burn it that was a f 11 okay 22 Dirty 20. Okay. Three. Oh my god. Fucking proddy. I'm always last. Always last in a fight. Just uh, get initiative on your, always last. your advantage always on your initiative. In the... It works wonders. Yeah, you do see, you, you regularly see Crispy acting abnormally quickly at the start of fights. Um, to a point where it's so it's not like a chance it's it's an no abnormal amount of times it's happening so yeah I'm sure he's probably told you he's got this fancy whip that does stuff um, anyways we're at the top of the round crispy it is your turn as this figure of you as in goblin form stands before you you just smacked it I I can I, can I do something like can I can I use the rod of seven parts and do my instant like cast haste on crispy? No, you have to wait to your uh, till okay. it's your turn. Right. Um crispy uh yeah. Fist of fury uh, I assume. All right, so yeah, so I cracked it in the face with a whip. Um am I rolling an attack <laughs> for the action? Yeah, do it. That started all the that started the initiative rolls. 16 yep yep and i'll just tell you for expediency's sake 16 is the armor class gotcha all right so that did seven points okay um and then yeah i'm gonna do a bunch of fists of fury so three i'm a fear of blows so pop. three unarmed pop, pop. strikes pop 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 uh that's 19 that's a hit Another 19, that's a hit. And pop, pop. even better, so that's also a hit. Um, and that's another 24 points of damage. Okie dokie. All magical, all bludgeoning. Yeah, when you hit it, it does feel solid, and as you're extremely quickly punching it and just laying into it, it starts to form, it's changing shapes again, and it's forming into something much larger in front of you. And uh, Given, given that it has substance, uh, my last hit, just the last one, I'm going to see if I can stunning strike it. Okay. What's the... Uh... So it comes to... Two shit. Cool. Sure, right. Yep. Um, that is a nat twenty. So. Well, that works. Uh, can't stun that. Mark that off, and I did. Ashwin, it is your turn. It's forming in Woo! front of you as you've seen Crispy lay into it, into a large lizard-like creature. Ew. All right, so 
I whip out the old sword, the flaming sword, and very, very loudly say, it's starting to turn. <laughs> Rylos, you hear her. You hear Ashwin say it's that, and then fucking this badass sword lights up. Excellent. Uh, was I still on Christy, or did I like jump off? I assumed you jumped off. Uh, you can't okay. like, yeah. That makes it easier. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just running at this guy, this lizard. Yeah. With the sword above my head, about to strike it. Try yeah. to set it on fire. Okay. Um, make your attack. Roll a d20 and add all your modifiers. It would have been great. And my dog pushed it, so I didn't make it. Poppy. Uh, you have two uh, attacks, I believe? Yes, or did I you did. miss on. So... Okay. I was going to say, I missed the first one because of my dog. Yep. And I thought. Okay. So. <laughs> so, nothing. It's hard to, to get a gauge on this creature as it's fa forming into something else. Um, you think it's going to be in one spot. It's ch moving so quickly. You just swing and miss. Um, and it is now the creature's turn unless you want to action surge or do something else ashwin i think i'm gonna action surge my pride has been bruised I'm okay <laughs> have at it two more attacks i think unless i'm wrong yeah fucking kid oh my god not this dice get new dice <laughs> imagine Ashman going, fucking! fucking <laughs> God fire. damn it! I okay. missed on both of them. Light on fire, you weird fucking familiar! Uh, okay. Yeah, Ashwin, <laughs> something Ashwin is going on. Four swings and miss. Maybe, maybe it reminds you of home or something, the, the nature of this place. It's a beautiful room you're in, and this creature is beautiful. It is now its turn, and it forms into what you think, for those of you who have seen dragons in books or seen dragons, it forms into a petal dragon. Uh, the first thing you notice right off the bat, this thing has no teeth or claws, very blunted uh, hands instead of claws, but its skin is like a dragon underneath but on top there's just petals and flowers in constant bloom uh the pa pastel colors you uh were seeing previously in here and it is going to okay it rears up on its back legs and um if you guys want to I didn't get where you were in the room, but if you guys want to, I'm two of you are going to get affected by this. Um, Ashwin and Crispy. Well, I'm, I, I was going to say I'm standing in front of it. Okay. So. If if I'll leave it up to you, Rylos and Prady, if you think you would have been near him or if you think you wouldn't have been, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, but either way, you guys, at the very least, uh, Ashwin and Crispy need to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh damn! Well, come, what's the come. area? What's the area of effect? I, I'm just gonna say I assume I'm 20, 20 feet behind. Uh, it's a cone. A it's a cone. Uh, so. What's an eight? Yeah, it's 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 a pretty big cone so if you're directly behind him then i would say you're probably uh affected yeah, I'll, I'll roll for it just to be okay so it's a cone of yellow and pastels and pinks and purple pollen that comes out of this thing's mouth and hits you in the face there's no burning there's no 
freezing. There's no acid. There's no anything you're, you've heard about dragons. It's just like very light dust being blown in your face that looks <laughs> like <laughs> pollen. <laughs> and an 8 for Ashwin, a 18 for Crispy, 10, Ten for Prodi, Six, uh, 17. 17 for Rylos. Uh, Rylos and Crispy, you take in this pollen and uh, you feel kind of your your will and, and uh, your initiative, for lack of a better term, coming to my head right now, uh, starting to fail and, and some sort of will of another creature starting to take over, but you sh shrug it off. Um, the opposite happens for you, Ashwin, and Prati as you take in this pollen, and you are now charmed uh, effectively you have the charm condition so um yeah rylos and crispy you are immune to this effect for 24 hours and ashwin and Prati, uh you can okay it's till the end of the next round so um that's what's happening. You feel this joy and happiness and serenity overtake you. Right. It's a lot better than the carnival. Rylos, it is your turn. All right. I'm, is there anything like around that I can like, either hop onto or is it just like all flat terrain? Yeah, it, it was... It was uh, m like a mound in the center, but the mound was essentially the dragon. So uh, now it's flat terrain, uh, just flowers and stuff. There's nothing you can you can parkour off a wall, I guess. But I don't know. We'd have to acrobatics check or athletics check that um, if you were going to do that. I'm just going to kind of like move, like after being hit by that wave of pollen, I'm just going to kind of like move off to the side like, kind of away, and I'm going to take out my short bow and pop a shot at it. Okay. That is a, uh... That is a miss. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to leave it to you, for the most part, to determine whether there's sneak attack, because I always inevitably get confused about it, but, uh... Yeah, I'll just leave it to you. Just It would have been, but... Nah. Okay. Just... That's one arrow gone. All right. You have two attacks? Nope. Nope. Any bonus action? Anything you want to do? Uh, nothing I can do. Nothing I can hide behind, so I guess I'm done. Okay. You can't, as a halfling, can you hide behind... Oh, they no. have to be a size taller. <laughs> <laughs> if only... If, <laughs> if only somebody was human. <laughs> Crispy. <laughs> no, no pressure. Don't make... <laughs> you probably feel so bad already. Uh... So, I felt pressure. <laughs> Prati, it is your turn. Um, you, I'm charmed. Uh, yeah, you're charmed, but you start to feel your senses and your ability to control yourself come back at the end of your turn. Goes back up to Crispy. It is your turn. Well, I'm, I'm gonna so keep, happy. Uh, yeah. Trying to hit it. Seventeen on the first one, and I'm gonna burn a key to do. Uh, I can say one with one with the blade. So that does. So the first hit is eleven points of damage. What does that do? One with the blade. Um, when I make a when I hit something, um, I get to add my martial art another die of martial arts damage. So the damage was two d six plus four essentially instead of one d six. Cool. Um. Sure, I mark off the key for that. And then I'm going to hit it again um, with my fist. Missed. That sucks. And then my uh, bonus action, I'm going to summon up my shield of faith. Okay. Um, cool. So I do that. Excellent. And that's my turn. And you hear a voice in your head 
when you do that shield of faith that says of course and it's the you just hear of course and it's the same voice that mm -hmm. came from that being you met uh, definitely makes me shudder does the shield look any different i mean i was just it was just like a, a flat round shield before of soft white light does um, it take any it's, any shape it's more pale maybe more dull just kind of bland okay, okay. Uh, nothing, nothing beautiful or resplendent. Got it. All right. So Ashwin, it is your turn. You are feeling pretty, pretty, pretty good. And then you stop feeling that good and you realize I've just been fucking charmed. And that will be the end of your turn. You take a deep breath. No longer full of pollen. Okay. How dare. It is no... Happy. 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 Kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since... Relax, don't do it. Crispy. <laughs> going to kill <laughs> Malaysia. Find another plane, another sphere. Uh, Crispy, why don't you make another wisdom saving throw? Okie dokie. That one is a 16. Okay, you just made it. Uh, you start Woo! to see in front of you your, some pretty horrible shit, specifically tailored to Crispy, but um, you're determined to not be charmed by this thing as you've seen your friends uh, fall victim to. And that's disappointing. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, Rylos. Take another shot. Do it. With the bow. Nope. Wow. My dice are not with me tonight. Sorry, buddy. That's a miss. That happens to the best of us. You're just nervous maybe working with this new crew. For, first, you know, they got a weird name, like Big Bedfellows. Like, yeah, you had that. I don't want to be here. Just Yeah. That conversation happened right before this, and it's so off-putting. Um, excellent. Prodi. Prodiford? Prodtholomew? Yeah. Prodmaster. Man, those are cool uh, sounds. Those are not my name, but yeah. Uh, Prodigy? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to... Brady gets out his other rod, black kind of stone, like unknown. Well, yeah, it's not stone. It's like some sort of unknown um, metal. And you just see beams of crackling energy, black, um, shoot across the room. And I just have to do the rolls for Eldritch Blast really quick. I normally have my dice, but I'm traveling, so I don't have them. Ildrich Blast. Ildrich. Okay, Ildrich. and uh, I'm assuming there's not disorder so far today. Like, does the, do I take off that one for my modifier? You're, you're good. Max's okay. place was a little... I'll say I didn't describe it as messy enough. I did mention it, but uh, we'll say you're good. Well, it's not going to matter on the second one. Um, so the first beam is a hit, I think. It, well, it's uh, 17. Is yep, that a hit? yep, yep, yep. What's the damage? Okay. Ildrich Blast. Black crackling energy of goth power. Edgemasters. <laughs> the Black Crow taps into his dark heart. It is uh, seven. All and right. And um, yeah, and then the other one misses because I rolled a two. So it's only like an eight. Okay. And so. back to the tap. Crispy. Oh, me already. All right. I'm going to keep hitting it. Keep hitting it. Uh, missed with the whip. Coming around with a roundhouse kick. That's a hit with a 
23. Um, I'm going to uh, Flurry of Blows again, so that's two more. That's Period. 17 plus 9. Period that's a hit. Spell. And 19, so three unarmed hits, and I will be Furying of the Small. I was planning on that. So let's see what we do here. That was a 1. Let's see, 1 plus 5 plus 8 for Fear to the Small, that's 13. So 9 is 21. 31 points of damage. All the damage. Total. Jesus. Hey, when when monks hit, they start just tearing tearing things up. All the damage. Okay. It's when you miss a bunch that it doesn't go so well. Yeah, you guys are making progress on this pollen dragon. Uh, that's your turn, correct? That is my turn. Ashwin, you now have regained control of your facilities. That's a Wait. term. <laughs> okay, so I am going to cast Infestation. Um, so it's a con constitution saving throw. Okay. Mm, 17. Damn it! Okay, for my second action, then I am just going to swing at it with the flaming sword. Do it. Hopefully. Wait, are you, um, you already used your action surge, right? Yeah. So infestation would take both, because I believe your action, Oh. your two actions occur when you're swinging... Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But I believe it's you can't. I I I'm still new. I don't. Yeah, know. for sure. I think it yeah. says on your page that like if you. It says casting time one action. What is your? Um, and extra attack is the other thing. Yeah, right. Extra attack says I believe I'm correct, but. but I also believe I you're correct. You when you attack, you can take another mm -hmm. attack. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. All right. So that line. Once again, I do nothing. Sorry. Huh? You're getting used to that spell. Listen, Chris, be Chris be can carry us yeah. the entire way. <laughs> there have other okay, fights where other it's people the other carry way around. <laughs> It's true. It's true. There's been plenty of times where Ashwin has plenty, just plenty of times. <laughs> ripped into things. Uh, I'm not making a good impression right now. Yeah. I'm it's... making a terrible impression right now. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so what happens? What happens now is this dragon starts to sing a song in. It sounds like a chorus, a cor, just a bunch of singers are singing it when this dragon starts singing the song of Sestilani. Do any of you speak? Sylvan? Nope. Okay. Nope. Uh, everyone that can hear must succeed on an intelligence saving throw. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, of course. Of course. Oh, man. Why do I have to be dumb as rocks? 16? Me too. Proddy, what'd you get? I'm looking it up. <clears throat> I got a nine. Okay. Ooh. Holy schmoly. God damn it. I might be a great fighter, but I'm dumb as rocks. Uh, six. All right. Uh, Rylos, you immediately realize that this song is doing something to the air and... To your mind, it starts. You feel it start. Pain start to to happen. Just you can't describe where, but you just feel pain. You like if somebody asked you where the pain was, you wouldn't be able to tell him. It just hurts. Something hurts, and all of you feel the same. But there's no conscious thought of like pushing it out or Rylos. You're able to just kind of with that knowledge just push it out um all of you take except rylos um this is gonna be bad 12 
18. 23 psychic damage. Ooh. Um, 23 psychic damage. And you're stunned for one minute. Good luck, Rylos. <laughs> okay. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turn. Zzz. It finishes the song, happy? seemingly happy that some of you succumb to its effects. And Rylos, it is now your turn. Can I try and like, is if its attention's not not on me, trying to like sneak up on it? Sure, I'll say it's not on you. It's it's uh, was weaving this song, uh, with magic. Go ahead. Okay. Then I will put away my short bow, draw my dagger and rapier, and I'm gonna try and stab it. Okay, is this are they magical or no? No. Okay. So the first one Oh, I saw that one. Uh the first one is thirteen plus eight. Uh twenty one? Yep. Sixteen is the AC. That's sweet. So let me just roll my dent, my sneak attacks. That's six, twelve. Wow, that was really good. Uh, 10, 26 damage. Okay. When you hit it, you feel as though you've hit plenty of creatures with your weapons before. So it's its ability to shape change so quickly and something about its makeup is rendering your attacks less effective. Okay, then uh, as a bonus action, I will use my cutting action to stab again. Do it. With my dagger. Thank God I'm a halfling. Uh, 16 hits. Yep. So that's a d4. Uh, not as good. So that's 10, 16. Okay. You're making progress, nevertheless. And is that your turn? That, that'd be it. Okay. Prodi, go ahead and make a, another intelligence saving throw. Uh, 18. Yep. You are... You've snapped out of this psychic pain, uh, but that is your turn. You've used it to fix yourself. Okay. Crispy, same thing. Balls. It's a nine. After doing all that damage, the song is just so catchy and painful at the same time. It's such an earworm. Uh, and it's And it's stunned, it's not charmed, right? Yep, stunned. Not a charm effect. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, your turn is done. Ashwin, make an intelligence saving throw. I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> a twelve. Nope. Uh, back to the Z dragon's turn. I keep forgetting to roll for recharge. Yeah. Okay, Rylos, make a wisdom saving throw as this thing weaves more magic, and this time you're starting to see things you don't want to see take shape in front of you. Oh, man. That is a 18. There you go. Um, you shrug it off. And... Perfect. Uh, the nightmare started, but it was resisted. Back to your turn, Rylos. I'm going to stab it again. Do it. So, uh, 15, first one misses. Okay. Coming in with the dagger. Second one misses. Okay. Um, it's definitely oh, paying... Wait, no, second... or, no, second one misses. Sorry. Okay. It's definitely or... paying attention to you. Actually, no, the second one hits. I'm, I'm math wrong. Okay. DC's 
16? The AC armor class is 16, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, second one hit. Okay. So let's roll that damage. Uh, that was not as good. Uh, actually, it wasn't terrible. Another 16. Okay. You're cutting, you're cutting daisies. Making progress. All right. Proddy. Proddy's just like, oh, God, that was painful. And he, he points his finger at the kind of, he kind of makes like a gun with his hand and points his finger. He doesn't even know what he's doing. He's just like, this seems cool. And all of a sudden, you hear these loud bells ringing. Does he, does, he does toll? He casts toll the bell. Toll, toll the, the dead. I like toll the toll bell. The bell. <laughs> toll the bell. <laughs> what's the uh? That is triangle and ding ding ding. ding. What's the saving throw? Uh, fourteen wisdom. Yep, uh, that's a nineteen. Uh, the bells do not deloriously. Is that a word? Delor. Because I know it says in the spell Dolores. 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 Adventure, Adventure Dictionary. Yeah. Dolores. Dolores. Yeah, Dolores. Though. That's Max's old secretary. Um... Damn it, Dolores. <laughs> so, Crispy, make that save. Make that save. Got another nine. Oh. It's oh. Gonna, uh... Oh, sorry, Proddy. I what? was going to do uh, some healing light as a bonus action. Do on, it. On who needs it the most. I think you've all been attacked the same. Same. I'm uh, good. Let's give it to Crispy. Okay. Well, yeah, actually, I can, spread it. I can spread it around. Just do some D6s. Can you spread it to multiple people? Can you spread your disease? <laughs> From my perspective, uh, it's a disease. Oh, yeah, I can only heal one creature, but I can use max 3d6. Okay, right. Yeah. It's only one creature. So it's like, it's crispy. I'm going to do, what's the uh, roll? Can I do 3d6? Is that part of the thing? Yeah. Nice. Nine. Okay, crispy, you have nice. nine points of chlamydia healing. I'll take it. Okay. Whatever doesn't kill you makes it stronger. <laughs> That's what I say about chlamydia. Whatever. Chlamydia. Brought you by clammies. <laughs> Chlamydia for the common folk. Clammies. Find it at your nearest Baba Yaga's Magical Emporium. All right. Crispy. You roll the nine. This song is catchy. And it's sticking with you, Ashwin. Make an intelligent saving throw. Good luck, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up the slack. Yeah. 11? Good, good, good. Yeah. No. Same as you're, you're, you're digging this. Uh, you're in pain, but something about it still sticks with you. Back to the top. Or back to the dragon. Um, it's going to do it again to you, Mr. Rylos. DC uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, er, uh, 19. Okay. Uh you're good. I like how Ashwin's video froze. <laughs> Did you guys see that? She was tossing the dog under the bed and it froze like mid. Anyways, I'm I get entertained by shit. Uh so you saved. That's its turn. Rylos, it's your turn. Okay. I'm gonna try and stay like while it's still looking at me like, oh okay. Just keep trying to get those sneak attacks. And first one misses. Okay. Coming around with the dagger. Dagger hits. On a 16. On a dirty 16 plus 8. 24. Oh, my D6s are not with me tonight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. Oh, man. Jesus. Uh, you're right there. It is hanging on by a thread. The, the fact... Uh that your attacks are, aren't uh, doing full damage is not good. All Maybe right. I should shot for a dagger after this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Proddy. Proddy touches 
Uh, he runs over to Ashwin and he touches Ashwin. He casts resistance uh, once before the spell ends. The target can roll a d4 and add that number. Roll to one saving throw of its choice. You can roll to die before or after making the saving throw. The spell that the spell then ends. So he just sees Ashwin struggling and he wants to give a resistance to this spell. Okay, remember, uh, Ashwin, next time you roll, add a d4. Uh, then I'm going to use 3d6. And who has the least amount of health? You, I mean... Ashwin. Uh, uh, I'm down 20. Aren't we all down 20? No. Oh, yeah, what's his name got? Crispin got... So, increase by 8, Ashwin. Sweet Increase by eight. And crispy. You know what that means, crispy. It's time to roll them <laughs> dice. I did it. I got an 18. Oh, the gods are with you today, crispy. After not being with you, something about your devilishly sharp teeth. But now they have grown used to you. Okay, now you're good. But your turn's over. Sorry. Okay. Ashwin's up next. Let's see if she can follow suit. <laughs> Damn it! Did you roll the die? I rolled a... Yeah, I got a 10, and with your help, I got an 11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Ashwin definitely <laughs> rolls to die. <laughs> <laughs> Why did what's I turn? That, what's the what's the announcer from uh, Dodgeball, Bateman's character? <laughs> That's what this is reminding me of. Bold move there, Cotton. Yeah. yeah Thank you. <laughs> Let's see if it pays off for him. That mouse folk got stuck in this intelligence trap. Moving on. <laughs> it is the dragon's turn. And it's going to implant that nightmare into Rylos. Uh, here we go. Uh, what's the DC again? Why don't you tell me what you rolled? 14? Nope. What's your what's Rylos's worst nightmare? What could he see that would be just Obviously obviously no one in game, the other characters wouldn't oh, know right. this, but yeah, it would probably be this like older human woman with a wooden spoon screaming about like you know you you took more than your share. You see that, and she's smacking the shit out of you, and it uh, actually hurts. So you take forty ten. Ooh, move or lose it. D fours. Ooh. 25 uh, psychic damage Can't evade that. and you're terrified for one minute oh fun at the start of each of your turns you can repeat the saving throw or take more damage okay Rylos saving throw sweet of wisdom. Sixteen. Yeah, that's the that's the uh, DC. You done did it. You fought your way through the old lady. Mentally fought through her. <gasps> that's not a real spoon. So the real spoon hurt more. You need to treat kids with. You need to talk instead of be physically violent. All right. Roddy. Um, so does, does the song still affect Ash, or do I assume that it's over? It stopped, I'm just, it stopped singing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, okay. I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to slap the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, do some Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. So yeah, 
May the darkness overtake this flowery being. God damn it. Uh, so yeah, the first blast hits a uh, 19. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It only does. It only does five damage, and then second blast. And then I all mean, that's was... all you need. That's all oh, you need. Really? Your 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 goth energy just turns these these pastel colored flowers of oleander and uh, daisies and whatnot. I have a limited knowledge of flowers, but uh, yeah, it just hits this familiar and it goes poof, gone. There's still flowers on the floor, but nothing like what you were fighting. And it stops the flowers. As Crispy stomps the flowers, and you all regain your senses and facilities, I'm gonna stick. I feel like that's a, you. You can regain your facilities. I'm gonna say that's a thing. Uh, Faculties is what you're looking. That's at. fucking. Well, that's what it was. But sure, facilities work. Sure, go for it. Well, obviously, I knew something was off because I wouldn't be. I would have like. I would have been. I would have I would have been going for it if I didn't know if I was like yeah that's a thing, um, so. Proudy just goes wow that was a real war of the roses. That's where we're gonna end it yep. with that yep. with that just with, and that echoes when he says that was a w real war of the roses it just echoes and then that's where we're gonna end episode thirty six. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much to Liam for joining us. Happy to be here. We Hi. had a great time. I'm speaking for everyone. I had a great time, but they can <laughs> they can have their own opinions. Uh, but before we sign off, what we do here, we're going to go around the table, and you can plug anything you want to plug, your socials, your shows, your poetry. I don't know what you have, but we'll do Slam that. Poetry. Slam poetry. Lex, let's start with you. Hi, I'm Lex. Uh, you can find me everywhere at It's Lex the Chameleon, and next week you can find me on Blank Slate on Teddy Rooster slash Twitch. Yeah, come watch. Cool, thanks, Lex. Liam. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Liam Mary. Uh, the next show that I will be on will not be on. I will be on Enter the Hex season two, but my episode will be in August second and third. But it starts July 17th? 17th. So next week. Okay. Enter be there. the Hex. Enter the Hex Blades curse. Okay, Proddy. I mean Dave. Oh, thank you. Um, you can find me at DRod3 on Instagram and Twitter. And nothing to plug right now. And Brian. Anything can be a slam poem if you say it like this. And I'm just here to play D and D. There you go, Jake. Just for you. You kind of kind of cut out at the end there. I'll blame the. <laughs> well, I said I like playing D and D only in slam poems. I assumed so. <laughs> I'm Jake Friday. Thank you for joining us for episode 36 of Venture Ventures. You can find me on the socials, Instagram at Jake Friday, on Twitter at Jake. No, Instagram at Jake of the Friday, Twitter at Jake Friday. I make it confusing for myself. Also follow Venture Ventures on Instagram and Twitter at Venture Ventures. Very simple for that one. That's it. We won't be here next week, but the following week, I think we'll be on more of a regular schedule as we were. It's summer. People are doing things. This new time, I'm having to rearrange schedules, but... It's fine. We'll be in a regular schedule in two weeks. So, without further ado, be excellent to others, be excellent to yourself, and we'll see you in a few. Bye. Oh.